Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Deepin Linux 20.1. So let's get started. Now it's been a while since I last checked out Deepin Linux. I think the version was 15.4 or 15.5 or something like that, but they made a ton of improvements since then. So I decided to jump in and check it out again because I do really like this desktop. If you really wanted to, you could actually just install Debian and then install the packages on top of that and get your own de Deepin desktop experience without having to install the actual operating system itself. Now talking about installing the operating system, it actually went through super easy. I mean, it was about four clicks and the installation went through and then when you first boot it will actually have the prompt where where you would have to agree to certain terms set your languages location and your username and that's about it that's about another five click once you're done with setting up the initial boot it'll ask you if you want it to be in efficiency mode or fashion mode to make it look or feel different or operate different so you could also choose that as well but we will be jumping into it again so uh, to begin this is a fresh install of deep in Linux and I installed it onto the Odyssey x86. So if you guys want to check out that computer, I'll leave a link on the top left. And uh, this is basically stock. I haven't installed anything or changed anything, but it does look a ton of difference. Like, especially when they changed the menu on the bottom with more curves, they made it a lot more rounder than it used to be. And also the notification menu that used to slide out and you were able to set your settings like scaling and all that stuff. They got rid of that in place of the control center. So. Uh, let's check out the settings control center and we'll pop into, I guess, each one. I think I could just click one and then I'll, yeah, I'll put it on the side over here. So accounts, this is where we just set up their account. Then we got our display, which I changed to 1080. And what's cool is when I go to brightness, this is a monitor, not a laptop or anything. So I'm actually able to like dim. I don't know if you could see this, but dim and make it brighter. So I think it actually changes the actual full image of the desktop instead of having to configure the... Uh, light input or output, but on laptops, it actually works as well because I tested this on laptops. It, it actually changes the power usage from the LCD monitors. Now, display scaling um, on a 1080, I guess I could go up to 1.25, but you do have fractional scaling. And that's one of the things I do like about Deep in Linux. It, it came out with the fractional scaling. And then you got your refresh rates. Now, default applications, uh, they have their own Deep in browser, which is, I believe, Chromium, but they just uh, themed it to be their own. Uh, they have their own deep in mail client, uh, their tech. Well, this is, I'm not sure what text editor this is, but it is a different icon for it. Uh, music, they have their own deep in uh, music thing. Uh, they have their also another, their own video player, uh, deep in video player, I believe. And, uh, their image viewer, which I don't know if it's theirs, but, uh, yeah. And then their own deep in terminal, which I do like personalized. This is where you can actually change between the dark theme and the light theme. Uh, if you're on auto, obviously, depending on time, then you got the dark theme that looks like this. I'm going to keep it on light because it's actually a little bit easier to see on, on YouTube. Icon themes, uh, we passed this before. We're actually able to use a bunch of icon themes, even the stock papyrus. But I'm going to keep it on boom, which is the one they uh, advise. And they have a couple of uh, Awadi. I do like their mouse theme, the boom mouse theme. And then they have this dark boom with a little blue hint of highlight around the mouse cursor. And then fonts, you could choose the size and what they use, and they use NATO Sans as stock. Uh, they do detect all my devices, including Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so that's pretty cool. I didn't have to do anything extra for that. And notifications is one of those things that you could set turn on or turn off for what you want. Sounds, this one is pretty easy to adjust. I just could choose between the speaker, which is the headphone jack on this computer, or the HDMI output, volume, balancing uh, volume boost they actually have input they i don't have any inputs on here so it's not going to show up and then sound effects they have pretty cool sound effects especially like boot up some of these are pretty cool notification ah, that sounds like a robot voice all right bluetooth it does work um detects everything uh, date and time is one of the things where when i went to time settings uh, time format they actually don't have u.s standard time it's uh the year then the month and the day but they uh, there's no selection where i could reverse it back to the way i'm used to which is would be the month then the day and then the year uh so that's one of the that's a bummer like they don't have that but otherwise you could change your 24 hour format or regular format depending but 
yeah, that's one of the things. Um, I don't know if it's going to break an operating system from using it if it doesn't have that time. Uh, power saving, if you got laptops, you could actually change all the settings here, uh, plugged in or whatever. Uh, mouse settings, scroll speed, double click. Okay, that's normal. The mouse, pointer speed, acceleration, natural scrolling. Uh, keyboard, okay, keyboard layout, system language, shortcuts. Okay, you can set up the shortcuts here. What do they got? Terminal, terminal quake window. They actually called it the quake window. Oh yeah, look at that. It, that works pretty well. Screenshot, control, alt, A. Does that take it like right away? No, I do like their deep in screenshot. If you go like here, you could record the desktop on that specific spot, uh, save it, uh, change it, add like little drawings onto it, take the screenshot, whatever you want. It's actually, I like that deep in screenshot tool. All right, let me close out that. Well, that didn't close out. Oh, there you go. Okay, um, delayed screenshot, control print, full screen, window screenshot, there's a lot of screenshot. Uh, screen recording, similar window, switch similar window, and switch similar dot dot dot. Okay, updates, they have their own thing. It's, it, it is pretty up to date, I did check, and as of today, there is no updates. Uh, I think there was one, but I, I, it's, I, I could click on it to update it. And I am on the Intel Celeron J4105, 64-bit, edition license, I am using the community edition, and general settings. Uh, I could change the boot menu to make it look different, I guess. Themed. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that. And that's about it as far as the settings go. Let's go check out their menu. And over here they have all the standard stuff. Mail, terminal, the stuff that we were looking at, computer, uh, boot maker, that's pretty interesting. Uh, okay, this could allow you to burn an ISO image to, as, to a USB, I guess. Uh, disk manager, I do like their system thing, but I'm gonna show you guys in a second. Their package installer. Uh, okay, before I show you guys the app store, I do wanna show you guys um, the system monitor, which is one of my favorites. This looks really cool and it operates really well. It's easy to see. I could pop over into services and also see what's running on startup group. Uh, what's dead, what's disabled, and you can enable stuff like that. So their services is pretty easy to read. And then again, their processes. If you're familiar with the Window 10 isk environment, this is very similar to it. Especially if you change the style of this to efficiency instead of um, fashion, you will actually get a pretty cool. Uh, let me see if I can change that. How do I? How would I get there? I think probably back in settings and display, refresh rate. No, personalize, general, rounded corner, scale. I don't know if it's here or not. You could actually set the transparency on this. It's got to be somewhere around, but I don't know where it is. Maybe if I go into here, plugin, status, location, mode. There you go. Efficiency mode, and that looks like a start menu. See that? It still has the rounded corners. It actually does it only to one side. That's pretty cool. And I'm going to switch it back to fashion mode, and that stays on the bottom. Okay, uh, next up we have their App Store. This is, when I checked on my IPS, this seems to be the only thing that's kind of contacting China to see what uh, packages they have. So the only thing I probably wouldn't install if you were gonna do this completely yourself would be the App Store because I don't see anything else going or communicating out there unless I open up the App Store itself. Uh, but it is actually pretty easy to navigate if you are planning to use their App Store. Um, if I want to install, say, Steam, I could click on it and it won't even ask me for password. So that's a weird thing because I'm very used to the app store asking me for passwords and this one I could just hit install and it won't pop up with anything. While that is installing, I'm actually gonna pop over to their file manager and this seems, this is their own file manager. Let me see if I, I'm sure about that. Yeah, it is their Deepin file manager. It is pretty easy to navigate. I do like how the icons turn out. And if I was to switch it to list view, I do get all the stuff that I like to look at. What if I made this smaller? Okay, that's the smallest I can get. Okay, it doesn't uh, uh, scale. You know, sometimes they scale it as you're going. Especially, let me see the icons. No, nope, that's okay. That's not too bad. I do enjoy uh, looking at this. It is very pleasant on the eyes. Now, what's weird is they have a 7.5 gigabyte volume. Now, this is actually my swap, and I don't know why it's actually showing up here. And if I was to go over back to my system 
monitor, you could see that this 7.5, uh, where is it? Swap right here, is that disk itself. I just don't know why it's showing up. All right, you heard that notification. That means this is done. If I hit open, it should open. And yeah, I, I don't think I would have a problem. They do have a little thing over here that I could slide in. Plugins is just the normal stuff. Status, I can't really see anything. Okay, that's a normal Steam installer thing. If you're running it for the first time, you do have to install particular um, packages for it to run. And let me see, pictures, wallpaper. Oh, let's go check out some wallpapers while we're doing this. Minimize this, minimize this. Wallpaper. They do have a lot of cool wallpapers and I do really like the fact that I don't have to go and search for something. This feels like a Mac. This might even be the Mac OS one. Uh, this is the dark uh, light version. This is another Mac OS uh, wallpaper. Uh, this is an LXDE wallpaper <laughs> or Lubuntu. Uh, let's see. This looks pretty cool. Okay, that's a little bit too bright. Uh, let's see. This one looks pretty cool. Yeah, let's keep it like that. That doesn't look too bad at all. And this is still installing. Return to continue. There you go. Steam is running. It's got a really cool drop shadow. It's like a Mac style drop shadow. So you see a pretty big drop shadow over here. File manager works pretty good. Um, doesn't get in the way. I got this guy going. I mean, I really do like this operating system and I've been playing around with it for only a past couple of days, actually on a little laptop just to see how it works. I haven't found any problems other than the clock itself, the date, and that little swap file because it happens to do it on my other thing as well. So I don't know what, what it is, uh, maybe because it's a weird size or something like that, but it seems to show up on my file manager and that's a problem. Now, going into Chromium before we get off this, uh, this is their version of Chromium. You can see it's running Chromium or Chrome and they have 5.3, but it's like their deepened Linux version. So if you want to install anything else other than their version, you might want to install Firefox or actual straight up Chrome from Google or Chromium itself. But otherwise, you see this, it has their Chinese search. So I would have to go into about, oops, sorry, go into settings and search engines and advance no not advance manage search engines other search engines so if i go into google let's see google.com it doesn't even have it you're gonna have to add your own google search engines see the keyword etc etc i don't know it but you do have to add it yourself. Now, while I am in here, I'm gonna do YouTube. Maybe I shouldn't have installed that because it keeps popping up and it's getting annoying. Okay, it is a little slow. I'm booting up a hey guys, web browser. On? Here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are gonna to be building our budget NAS and Plex setup with hardware. Okay, that seems to be so working pretty well. Started. Full screen. Okay. So I want to thank Micro Center for sponsoring. Not too bad. I mean, it's still not on my full HD setting, even though it should have been. Sponsoring this build, they're the ones that actually provided the hard drives. Okay, that's not too bad. I feel like their browser is a little bit slow, but it could be just my processor itself. Oh, finally I booted up. So yeah, Steam installs pretty well. I just had to one click into their app store and that's it. I do like their screenshot program. Uh, this is their little photos program and I'm pretty sure again it's their deep in photos yep albums their music program this is again I don't know how to run these because I don't have any music in stored for this this is their calendar oh cool I actually get to resize this whoa uh, calendar is not too bad it's I guess it's easy to look at can I sync it with anything let me go to theme dark theme system theme um that's it i don't think you could actually sync it with like google clouds or anything like google calendars or anything i don't see anything that you could do it with add music equalizer okay you got the standard equalizer settings shortcuts okay that isn't too bad 
Oh, I could keep it minimized on the tray so I could run it over here. Actually change input and also the volume. I could check my network status or Wi-Fi, Bluetooth status. And I could change my, there's an onboard keyboard here. So I guess it's easier for people who are using touchscreens. You could just click over here and actually make this a little bit bigger for you to click on. Anyway, that is about it for this desktop. Um, I found it to be pretty clean this way. Um, it's much better than it was when it was 15.4 or 15.5. I don't remember which version I reviewed last, but yeah, this seems to be uh, getting up there. And I really do like the new look and the new style of how everything operates. It seems to be very seamless. There was only those little bit of quirks that I had, which is the date and also the uh, swap file thing that was going on, but that is about it. I ran some programs on my test um, like Steam and all that stuff and it ran fine. But overall, I do enjoy the experience of this operating system. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.